Hi, I'm Jay. This is Bruce. These are our Triumph bobbers. I was going to buy a brand new one, and Bruce convinced me to build one in his back garden. So <laughs> he took us into the garden. He has a man shed where we started with the first Triumph bobber, bobber that we brought over from America, repatriated it, um, 1971. And Bruce is going to talk you through the details about the bike. Okay, so a little story behind the, uh, the first of the bobbers that we built, this uh, T120. Finding donor bikes these days is not so easy or not so cost effective. Um, this one was sourced in, in Boston, hence I call it the Boston Bobber. Uh, so I, I travelled over to the US to bring this back in our container. Uh, quite a successful journey back. I picked this up in uh, the docks, very close to here in London docks. Took it home. First task, well let's say, let's get the bike running as a standard bike, which we did. Took it down a, an airfield, got it MOT'd, all good, looking good for MOT, uh, get it registered. And uh, from that point it was like modification time. But that hurts, modifying a bike which is looking good as standard and starting to chopping about yeah. the frame. So, uh, but the decision was made, that's why it was bought and that was what was going to happen. A lot of people will think, why would you chop a frame on one of these Triumphs? And I can say quite honestly, these are the most undesirable version of the Triumph with the oil-in frame with the very high seat back, seat height. So if you're going to chop a frame on one, do it on one of these 1971 models uh, because they're, they're quite plentiful and they're not the most desirable. But they can look like the most beautiful bikes once they're, they're modified. Okay, just starting around at the, uh, look, some of the details of the bike. A lot of it is very standard, um, but they look far from standard. And a lot of that's to do with the frame modifications that we'll look at in some detail. But the, the front end of the bike, really on this, this particular T120, which is an original Bonneville, is uh, really a standard front end, standard height, uh, standard conical hub, twin leading shoe front brake, 19 inch front wheel. Obviously they're chromed wheels at start, but this has been stripped off and uh, two part acrylic painted. Um, Oh, clocks are all standard. The nice thing about this particular bike is it's showing 6,000 miles on this and I actually believe this is original mileage because once I got digging into that engine nothing had been touched. So I'm very happy that we found a sort of a very original low mileage bike in the US and it was well worth bringing back. Of course the, uh, the front headlight here is, is just a general purpose custom unit but it sets off, it's the right size for the bike, looks like uh, sort of cafe racer style and these bikes in general are something between a bobber and a cafe racer. The inspiration came from a guy in the US, uh, Dave Helrich, who runs a, a customization factory and uh, he really gave me uh, the inspiration for doing this because the modeling is, is very much on his styling. Yeah, we both decided what we liked and, and we went ahead with it and chose the design and went for it. <clears throat> I think, so some of the most critical points about uh, building one of these Triumph bobbers is on the oil in frame. Most people choose uh, the, the pre-oil in frame bikes for building a bobber because they've got bolt-on subframes. Once you start cutting off a subframe on an oil in frame, then you're committed, then there's no turning back to a standard bike. Now, finding a frame builder for doing this job is not easy. There aren't many people who know what they're doing to build the frame in such a way as that you get such lovely lines straight out parallel from the, from the base tubes. Most people will keep some of the engine mountings, chop them off, and that ends up for a little bit of an ugly look on the, the oil in frame bobbers. This is done in a proper way, and it's done by a guy in Chroma called Rue from Rue Weld. He does a fantastic job on these and uh, is willing to take on more work. So some of the, the key points about the build. The engine obviously strips straight back right to, uh, to the bare bones so we know every bearing in there, we know everything is, is good. Um, some advice if you're buying one of these old Triumphs, somebody says to you that the engine's been rebuilt, ask them what did they find in the sludge trap? If they can't answer that question, don't believe it's been <laughs> rebuilt. That is a bugger of a job to clean out and these bikes have had their sludge traps cleaned, their new big end bearings, little ends, bearings all over, clutch baskets, clutch plates, everything changed. They have been done on a budget, so these cases haven't been blasted. These have been aqua blasted, the Hessel in the head in the rocker boxes, and that's the only way of getting these a really nice finish. Keep away from bead blasting, go aqua blasting to get those nice and clean. The pipes on here are a little bit special. Uh, they do have baffles in them, but they're extended. Uh, um, I think they're an inch and three quarter bore pipe. They're a big bore pipe. And uh, yeah, they're a little noisy, but they, they look the part. They uh, sound good. Pretty happy with those. 
carbs, uh, a standard 930 AML carbs left and right, and the uh, obviously the, the K&N style filters on there. The first thing we notice when we ride a bike like this with such an extension, this is a four inch stretch on the frame. Uh, it's the shorter of the two bikes um, with a two inch drop. You will get a degree of chain slap. You notice this when you ride one bike alongside another, that rear chain really starts wobbling about, even when correctly tensioned. So this chain tensioner here, this is like from Monte Monster Craftsman in the US, it's the only one I can find which is suitable for this job. Looks the part with a skateboard wheel on and is super robust. And it takes out all the slack and takes out all that chain slap. So if you're building something with a, a stretch on the bike, consider to take one of these chain tensioners. Something else which is quite uh, <laughs> probably standing out on the bike is the battery eliminator. Uh, this Mighty Max from the, the US, very unpopular, very unreliable units. They've got terrible press, but they look fantastic. <laughs> and you can dig them out and put modern electronics on that, but the casting from that, I, we do use batteries on here as well because we don't want flickering headlights and that, so the, uh, the battery is there as, as a backup for the battery eliminator, but they look great and they act as a good clamp for the battery as well. These uh, torsion springs are chosen for looks, not for comfort. I mean, I'd like to say I can go distance on these bikes. Jay will say yeah, the same, can't. I think. 30 miles and you're pretty pleased that you've done a good journey. There is your, your back takes a hiding on these. They're, they're not very forgiving, but they do look good. So these are a bar hopper machine. And so that's what they were designed for, for going short distances uh, and obviously a little bit of good look and posing when they're parked outside. Well, that's it. And Bruce had an old bike, an old, another old Triumph that he'd had for 25 years. So yep. we used to take that one out and this one. It's got a lot of attention. So we thought, well, we both want one. So that then led us on to the next bike, again, another 1971 repatriation. We actually think with the, the date stamps on both of these bikes that they were actually shipped together to the US. Um, so again, brought it all over and Bruce does what he does best. After <laughs> taking six months of us building this one, we knew exactly what we needed to do to then get this one started as well. So we had the idea of what we wanted and what we liked. We had the welder, we knew exactly the style we wanted to go for, but we wanted to go for a little bit longer. And this is what happened with this bike. It's actually went to the same frame builder, asked for a copy exact. If you could make it a little bit longer, please do. He said, no, my jig is at the maximum for this. <laughs> but somehow he got an extra two inches out of his frame jig. And incidentally, only trust somebody who's got a frame jig for this particular model to, uh, to do that hardtail modification. So this now is, uh, is two inches longer. Uh, six inch stretch from standard. In order to compensate for that, uh, the fact that it hasn't got a great deal of drop on this, the front end has been dropped by an inch and a half to get the stance of the bike right. So you will see between the two a uh, little bit of difference in the stance between them. This is actually not a Bonneville, this is a TR6, this is the Tiger, single carb version of the machine, but it's been converted to Bonneville spec. So it took a, a different cylinder head, put on the twin carbs, timed it according to the Bonneville, and everything else is, is to Bonneville specification. So um, the, the idea of the copy exact was uh, to a point. The reason this doesn't have any paint on it, that's down to the bike shed. Bike shed said, we want this one with no paint ahead of the one with paint on it. So we saved money and we got a great look. We just hope it doesn't rain today. <laughs> so it's, uh, of course we will see a little bit of rust occurring on that tank. Um, so long term maybe this gets some paint, but for now it's looking good in its raw state. Yeah. Again, even having the longer stretch, even more reason for putting the chain tensioner on. This was the first bike to get the chain tensioner. This, this was, was added recently. Wanted, and uh, I think it, very worthwhile doing. Most significant thing about chopping this frame at this point and losing the engine mountings is you have to find a good way of making rear engine mountings. These are all handmade. Um, the brackets, um, the swinging arm pivot is no longer good in the length so you have to make up a new pivot, calculate exactly the spacing and then you can get a very good rear engine mounting uh, made and, and good looking as well so it really fits the style. This is the original swinging ma arm mounting point and becomes a good rear engine mount and it's essential. Also essential is don't leave foot pegs hanging, make sure there's tabs on the frame welded on so that you get a good secure point. So if you ever want to put pressure on those foot pegs, you're not going to bend anything on your frame mountings, engine mountings. 
So we're, we're pretty well concluding on the, the design of the bike. Things like the rear fenders, a lot of parts to the bikes came from, uh, you know, dealers old stock or these fenders. Both of them came from uh, sort of Kempton Park Auto Jumble, bought them as a pair. Polish them up. Lucky I did buy two at the time because they <laughs> uh, helped with the copy exact. Um, the mountings for them, maybe I've cheated a little bit here or say we've cheated a little bit here because we use these go-kart Bob, um, bobbins uh, for mounting on the frame. They happen to be that 28 millimeter, the right size. Gives some adjustability into the rear fender, and a bit more sturdy. it's yeah, and they're pretty robust. So I think they're on there, good and secure. So they're they're a very strong item. Bikes are, are pretty well finished. Haven't gone to the point of putting lots of stainless on them yet. Haven't done the point of uh, finish up to the degree of polish that some of the bikes here might have. But I think they look pretty good. We're quite I happy do. and we're very happy to be invited to this event. First time exhibiting here. It's not the last bikes we're going to build. We've got other projects in mind now. Something that you can go some distance on in the, in the making. Uh, maybe for next year. But for now, I hope everybody's going to enjoy these. That's it. We're going to take, it, take them up to the plinths now. Get them exhibited and we hope you can come and see us at the Bike Shed 2019. And just to prove uh, these do run, it goes quite sweetly. All those open pipes, well, yeah, they're a little fruity. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Bike Shed YouTube channel. They're posting videos twice a week.